being said, Bharatiya Janata Party wins every single election on one thing, and that is our report card. The fact that we have worked round the clock over the last 10 years for the welfare of the people of India in every nook and corner of this country, not merely the state of Rajasthan, but even far-flung places which used to be neglected for the longest time, like the Northeast, like Jammu and Kashmir. And that is one reason why Prime Minister Modi's vision gets the blessings of the people. Okay. This election is going to be exactly the same. We are okay. going to people with a vision and a report card both. Okay, so it's a report card of the BJP that will matter and not the movement of a few netas. That's what Charu says. Uh, uh, Swanim, you know, despite losing elections to the Congress in December 2018, and, you know, uh, that also, thus being the opposition, the BJP managed to win 2019, around 24 seats in your in your state. In fact, it swept, and the, the other seat, in fact, went to RLP. Now, this time, BJP is, is the ruling party in the state and also in the centre. So, despite all this, why do you think... Rajasthan will vote differently this time. Yeah, actually, uh, BJP uh, won all the 25 seats in the previous two elections, but now in these elections, they will lose very badly. We are going to win more seats than BJP because there are many uh, promises that are unfulfilled, uh, promises made by the Prime Minister himself. So, uh, we, uh, the people, they uh, just wanted to know what is your report card, what you did for us. But instead of uh, putting forth this uh, report card, Prime Minister just uh, uh, criticized Congress and Congress leaders in his rally. And uh, never told, uh, I think he didn't uh, allow anybody to speak even uh, for a second about the achievements of the BJP government. So what he did just to criticize the Congress, Congress leaders, it, uh, and... Uh, in the other rally, uh, which uh, Rahul Gandhi ji added, the two rallies Rahul Gandhi ji added, he, uh, he just explains or manifesto, he put forth the vision of the Congress party. So there is a stark difference between the two leaders. So people wanted to know what BJP has done or what will they do for the Rajasthan. The, the uh, reason where PM addressed the rally right. is uh, Eastern Rajasthan. And people wanted to know why they installed a ERCP project for the five years. So this is the big issue. And this is, uh, uh, on these issues, people will vote against the BJP. Right. Harsha, let me also get my colleague Harsha in here. She's been tracking Rajasthan for many years. Uh, the state, Harsha, has 25 parliamentary constituencies. The polling is going to be held in two phases, 19th of April, 26th of uh, April. Can you tell us the significance of the seats of Karoli, Dholpur, that the PM addressed rallies in today, and also Bikaner and Jodhpur, where Rahul Gandhi was? Also, the PM is likely to go to Dhosa and Barmer uh, tomorrow. Tell us, uh, you know, the symbolic and also the political importance of, of these seats. Well, you know, Karoli Dholpur is very, very important because it's when you enter Rajasthan from the east, then that's the first district that you go into. Now, Karoli Dholpur, remember, Vasundhra Raje is also the former Maharani of the uh, royal family of Dholpur. And Dholpur has really been, in some senses, um, you know, where the, that big promise of the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project has um, been a part of the political narrative, not just in the assembly elections, but also now. Now, I'm here in Jodhpur, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat's constituency, and I'm going to be tracking him tomorrow. So, in fact, GSS, as he is fondly called here, is someone who is believed to have actually put the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project back on track. Uh, you know, as soon as the government changed, he got the MOU signed between um, uh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, and they're moving ahead with the draft of the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project. Very important uh, for those 13 districts of Eastern Rajasthan. Today, uh, one of those districts was Dholpur Karoli, where the PM was. So, of course, the impact is not just going to be Dholpur Karoli, but Bharatpur and uh, Savai Madhapur and, um, you know, Dosa, all those areas get impacted when the PM is in one um, particular constituency. So water, if you remember, the, you know, I think people picked up a lot of things that the PM said, but I immediately listened into the fact that he talked about the Eastern Rajasthan Can Canal project and he talked about the Jal Jeevan mission. Yeah. So this has definitely been part of the political narrative in Rajasthan. The PM touched upon that. Now, if you look at Bikaner, uh, you know, Rahul Gandhi in Jodhpur uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Falodi and Bikaner, uh, important, they are Western outposts, important uh, uh, constituencies. Uh, Arjun Ram Meghwal is fighting from there. Uh, and like we're saying, it's Operation Desert Storm because tomorrow he's going to be in Barmer. Now, Barmer is really, again, if you look at Bikaner, it's in the central part of the Western side. So it impacts uh, seats, uh, Jodhpur, Barmer, Jaisalmer, all those areas get impacted by Bikaner. 
and Ganganagar and Hanmangar also. Uh, now tomorrow he is going to be in Badmir, and I was talking about Operation Desert Storm Vasudha because. Uh, Ravindra Bharti is really, uh, you yes. know, making it difficult for both the Congress and the, and the BJP. He's got a huge social media following. He's a much talked about candidate. And when yeah. I told some of my family members, I'm going here and there, they said, hey, you're not going to Barmer, you better go to Barmer. So I think now after Jodhpur, I'm going to be going to Barmer to track exactly what's happening there. So yeah. that's the kind of seats which are creating a buzz in this election. Yes. And of course, Dosa, very important because, you know, the Congress does stand a chance in Dosa. Yeah. Um, they are hoping that, you know, that they've got a candidate who's won this election with over one lakh votes. So Dosa is somewhere the Congress is hoping they're going to open their account with these two, three seats. And I think Dosa is one of them. So yes. that's the importance of these seats. Yes. Uh, thank you, Harsha. Uh, also stay with us. Uh, uh, you know, Shipra, uh, you know, this point that Harsha made, you know, about Pani and water, and I was listening to the Prime Minister's speech today, and he said that he comes from Gujarat. He knows what short water shortage means. And, you know, this whole aspect of, you know, this factor of Ravindra Bharti and also some other candidates like the CPM candidate that I've been following, Amra Ram. How do you think, you know, these factors or these uh, Mr. Bhatti or Mr. Amraram, how, how do you think these are fact these factors could be influencing a bipolar contest like uh, what we see in Rajasthan every time? And also the fact that Congress has extended support to the Bharat Adivasi Party in Panswara Dungarpur. Do you see some of these aspects making a dent in, in, the, in the mainstream party's votes or do you, uh, do you see this influencing the larger uh, voter uh, uh, narrative or voter results? So, Vasudha, uh, let's talk about the western part, which uh, Harsha mentioned, because this has become a very interesting seat, in fact, because the whole uh, uh, star campaigners of BJP uh, would be flocking there in the in the uh, Barmer Jaisalmer seat as well. And in the last uh, Vidhan Sabha uh, uh, election also, if you see that this uh, th th there was just one seat which was grabbed by uh, Congress party, still, this is a very interesting seat and very, uh, I think, challenging seat for uh, BJP because of the tri uh, triangular uh, fight which we are perceiving uh, as of now um, uh, because uh, because of Ravindra Bhatti as an independent candidate and he was denied ticket from BJP uh, you know right since his uh, uh, you know stint in uh, uh, I think student uh, elections in uh, in Jodhpur University he didn't get a BVP ticket then he didn't get uh, BJP ticket in Vidhan Sabha and then this time also he was in the fray though it was the speculation that he might be supporting you know BJP uh, in fact so it is going to be a triangular fight that's that's why there is a tension uh, in both the parties both big parties here in Bargain right. uh, uh, right. um, uh, if, if you see the the, uh, the speech of uh, Prime Minister I, I would like to highlight two uh, important things in his speech from the perspective of Rajasthan Vasudha uh, one was of course uh, which Harsha also mentioned what one was water issue Water is, 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 uh, issue is re really very uh, important for Rajasthan. And this, this aspect of ERCP, which, which is being uh, an, an, uh, implemented in Rajasthan, it covers nine Lok Sabha seats in Rajasthan. So this, is, this issue, which was again highlighted by uh, Prime Minister Modi, is also important. And also he, I think very interestingly this time in his speech, I, I can see that he highlighted the aspect of uh, livestock population also. Right. Vaccination to a livestock. Let, let, me, let me get in Charu here. Charu, uh, yeah. you know, Rahul Gandhi today talked a lot about Agniveer scheme and, you know, in jo Jodhpur, there's also a military base and Rajasthan is also known to send a lot of youngsters to the to the army and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in fact, focused on welfare politics. He, in fact, accused the Congress of, of cheating students. He talked about exam mafia today. Uh, I know that you, you belong to a political party, but which political pitch do you think will find resonance among voters? Because both of them are really important. Both of them are really important, Vasudha, but uh, here what remains to be seen is that which political party delivers on its promises, which political party actually brings forward the issues of the people and keeps it above personal welfare. In the last five years, we've seen the state of... Rajasthan deteriorating every single day. Whether it was the situation of students, the rising number of suicide cases, unfortunately, we saw the way social security has taken a hit, women's security became an issue. The uh, number of violence against women cases went up to such an extent that even Rajasthan ministers, Congress ministers have been worried about it and uh, for expressing that uh, sentiment, they have been kicked out of the cabinet. So I think people are not going to forget all of that. Also, 
I think uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, one huge uh, winnability factor always is that he has his ear to the ground. He understands what the people need. So when we talk of our welfare schemes, when we prioritize issues like Har Ghar Jal, when we make sure that uh, the welfare given to the families of uh, our armed personnel is uh, paramount and it is not secondary to any, I think that is why people support him all around. And Congress has made its promises and they have already been rejected by the people mm -hmm. as shortly as four months ago. Right. Swani, would you like to respond to that also? How is your party going to handle not just the challenge of infighting? We all saw what happened with Mr. Gerloat and Mr. Pilot last time, but also of defections. Just yesterday, we saw the treasurer, Sitara Magarwal, move to BJP. How is your party going to handle the challenge of defections? Actually, BJP uh, have to has the challenge to handle the uh, defections because uh, 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 sitting MP uh, B, uh, so, uh, of BJP joined Congress party and is uh, he is contesting uh, on the Congress ticket, Mr. Rahul Kaswa. He is a very popular person and he, he will uh, surely he is going to win. So BJP has some challenges, uh, but the issue main issue in Rajasthan is that why uh, uh, BJP waited for five years to. Uh, uh, for the ERCP to be made a uh, uh, national project, why PM not uh, fulfilled his promises uh, to provide a, a drinking water to 13 districts? Why uh, special status has not been given to Rajasthan in the Jal Jeevan mission? Even when the Jal Shakti Mantri is from Rajasthan, uh, the, uh, actually PM promised that uh, uh, the, uh, the public welfare scheme that Congress government started will not be stopped now. Uh, they have already been uh, stopped and uh, stopped. So people are not getting uh, free treatment up to 25 lakhs. So people are asking why uh, Prime Minister uh, has promise, uh, promised and not fulfilled these promises. So these are the main issues and core issues. There is no infighting. There is no factionalism in Congress. We are right. fighting uh, <laughs> unitedly and we, will, we are going to win uh, this election because there are many promises that Prime Minister made three uh, months ago right. and they are not fulfilled. Even the uh, price, uh, petrol uh, prices of petrol diesel have not been uh, reduced. So right. oh, how can we believe that Prime Minister had uh, made, and uh, if Prime Minister makes the promises and he doesn't fulfill them? So right. we all know that they are not promises, they are just, just the jumlas. So that, that's an important point. Harsha, you know, you interviewed Sachin Pilot a few days ago. Tell us what, what do these elections mean for two important individuals, Ashok Kehlot and Vasundra Rajay. You know, both the sons are contesting. And Vasundra Rajay has also, you know, she's no longer the chief minister or for that matter, you know, she's not part of the mainstream leadership of uh, BJP in Rajasthan. What do these elections mean for these two leaders and for the state that is, uh, you know, that does not have Vasundra Rajay, you know, in, in one of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, pivot positions right now? Well, I think I'll answer the last question first, Vasudha. So definitely for the new leadership in Rajasthan, there's an entirely new leadership, absolutely first-timers, uh, you know, who've, who are in government now. So for them, it's really a litmus test. It's a chance for them to prove uh, that, you know, they can uh, make Rajasthan work for the BJP. Now, will they be able to get 25 out of 25? Uh, you know, that really is the benchmark because in the past two elections, the BJP has won and each and every seat and the Congress has not managed to open its account. For Ashok Gehlots, it's the second time that his son uh, Vaibhav is fighting this election. Uh, last time he was pitted against uh, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. He lost by a margin of about 4 lakh votes. This time we've been told extensive surveys were been done and uh, Vaibhav is now fighting from Jalor, which is adjacent to Jodhpur. So as much of a prestige battle for Ashok Gehlot as it is uh, for Vaibhav, because this is second time around, it's as much Ashok Gehlot's election as it is his son's election. Uh, Vasundra Rajay, in fact, not seen that active on the political landscape of Rajasthan. And when you go into nooks and crannies, into villages, people do talk about her, but she's not such a visible face in the party's campaign. In fact, uh, she's really uh, uh, fielding from afar, I could say, and she's concentrating more on her son's constituency, which is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jhalawar. But for mm -hmm. Sachin Pilot, I think somewhere, you know, Vasundra, uh, Vasudha, I beg your pardon, I was traveling with him, and I definitely got the sense that this election matters more for him than it did for the, the assembly election did. The mm. assembly election was fought on Ashok Gehlot's welfare plank. After all, he was the chief minister. Now, Sachin is also in the forefront. He's uh, one of the front batsmen for the Congress. And somewhere, I think he's querying the pitch for 2028. Because right. that's when it'll be his chance 
uh, to lead the election. So I think he's definitely, uh, you know, preparing ground for the next five years for his own political career. Right. Uh, Shipra Mathur, uh, do you think that the BJP is a little worried about, you know, uh, communities, different communities, be it the Jats or for that matter, uh, Dalits or even Rajputs? Because we see, we, we hear of these stories and speculations of Rajputs being angry. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's a Modi factor that matters. How would you assess the campaigns of both parties right now, specifically for Rajasthan? Because here is Rahul Gandhi talking a lot about representation in every state, Agniveer specifically in Rajasthan, and here is the BJP that's focusing on its welfare politics and also, you know, the, the, the factor of Narendra Modi and the credibility and popularity that the PM demands. Uh, see, the caste factor, which uh, is not uh, in, in the conversation of uh, BJP leaders, especially because they've already uh, said that there are four castes, you know, they have uh, they have underlined this fact again and again that in women and farmers and youth and women, these are four castes which they are focusing on. So they are apparently not talking about the caste uh, per se. But as far as the, uh, you know, uh, appeasing or targeting the, uh, the, the pop different uh, set of population, especially if you if you ask the, uh, about the uh, BAP factor also, tribal party factor also, that is one seat, Baswada and Dungarpur seat, which is uh, where, where the tribal factor is so important that the Congress leader, uh, uh, you know, he joined BJP uh, uh, for, for this reason only, uh, that the major chunk of tribal population uh, uh, would uh, come along uh, with the BJP. So that is one part. And also, Vasudha, I would like to highlight that how the women especially have been in the focus of all the campaigns uh, of uh, Congress party also, for one reason, that BJP has given uh, tickets to five uh, candidates this time in this election and Congress has allocated three uh, seats to women candidates in this election. Right. So total nine uh, nine women in the fray. And uh, if you, if you uh, look at the campaigning also, they are, they are apparently saying that, you know, what, what are the benefits which will be given to the women, especially for the, for the reason that in Vidhan Sabha elections also in Lok Sabha elections. Also, if, you, if you see the track record of, uh, you know, right. past two elections, three elections, women voters have have shown their uh, presence in a in a in a very a very strong way in lok sabha elections also right. and they they have asserted themselves so right. i think both the parties are uh, are very categorically talking about the benefits which which okay last last word from the political mm -hmm. spokespersons here charu there's a lot of talk in delhi about this nagar seat uh, nagar seat with, with hanuman beniwal and jyoti mirda and also the shekhawati region where your party performed very well last time churu sikar and junjunu how do you expect the contest to play out this time i would want you to respond to that and also uh, mr swarnim Asuda, we are going to win every single seat in the state of Rajasthan. And I say that with a lot of conviction. And I say that based on our uh, past track record and our vision for the future. Congress is a party that is so confused that can't even get its manifesto together. The manifesto itself is vague. And I have spent days asking every spokesperson I run into to explain what anti-people laws are and which ones they are repealing. They have no answer. So it's uh, not just uh, lacking attention to detail. It is also lacking attention to any kind of vision for the future. And that is one reason why we are going to sweep Every single seat, Apki Bar Char Supar. Okay, uh, last word, uh, Swanim, uh, you know, Shikhavati region saw the BJP win with huge margins. Why are you expecting your party to make uh, strides there? Okay, BJP has already uh, uh, lost its credibility, which was evidently even in the current, current for assembly election. They violated court, uh, model code of conduct, made minister their candidate, but uh, he lost. So uh, now I can assure you. All the three uh, central ministers will lose. Uh, the uh, Lok Sabha speaker is going to lose. And even uh, uh, what uh, BJP spokesperson is uh, saying is that uh, they have read our manifesto. But uh, can right. they tell us where is BJP's manifesto? Have okay. they uh, manifesto? So that's expected in the coming yeah, days. I'm running out of time. Thank you all of you for joining me on this broadcast and discussing Rajasthan. Eyeing a repeat of the electoral performance of 2019, BJP clearly is looking to win all 25 seats of uh, Lok, Sabha, like, Lok Sabha polls in Rajasthan, even as the Congress hopes to cause a dent in uh, BJP's plans. Both Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi were in Rajasthan today making pitches for their respective parties. Uh, moving on to news from the south of India, we turn our focus to the constitution of Viridhanagar, where the BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor-turned-politician Radhika Sarat Kumar to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. He is here as a report. <laughs> Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, 
Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want a change, and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic, like anywhere else, play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jaya Lalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election. But in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he is threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Veera Raghav for NDTV. That's all we have for you. Time for a short break. More news and updates on the other side. Present. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. You basically say to parents, stop chasing happiness and success for your kids. I'm like, hey, but if nothing else, I should at least be doing that. And in today's very goal-driven, success-driven world, I'd be like, I get it, but I don't want my kid to be left out. I want to give them the best chance. Right, so let's just take success first. And most Indian parents will have to admit, even in the privacy of their own solitude, that success is their main goal in raising their children. 
And when we raise children with this goal in mind, what we often do is become blind to who the child really is. When we drive our children to success, we objectify them. And no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we, we pretend to ourselves, we lie to ourselves, that all our pushing is coming because we care about our children. We love our children, but that's not the truth. We care about ourselves. We love ourselves. We feel good to have our children be successful. And if our children fall off the wagon, it makes us feel anxious. But then you also say, don't push for happiness. Don't make that your big goal. This is NDTV, and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Amid heat wave warning, Prime Minister Modi chairs key meeting, Prime Minister's heat wave preparation review meeting, this as IMD issues heat wave warning in several states between April and June. After CBI's arrest, BRS leader K. Kavita moves plea in court. Kavita seeks details of CBI application. CBI likely to seek Kavita's custody on Friday. Six children killed as school bus overturns in Haryana. Driver was reportedly drunk and speeding. School bus driver, principal and school secretary arrested. Battle Royale in Rajasthan as Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi hold rallies in the state. Prime Minister Modi targets Congress over corruption. Rahul Gandhi counters, accuses BJP of diversionary tactics. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh's emotional barb at Congress says that he did not get parole to attend his own mother's funeral during emergency. Says that Congress's charge of dictatorship is unfair and that Congress must look within. And Eid celebrations across the country. Bollywood's Khans celebrate Eid along with their fans. Our top focus, amid the heat wave warning issued by the Med Department, Prime Minister Modi held a high-level meeting. He reviewed the preparedness for the period between April to June as the temperature is above normal uh, in several parts of the country. In fact, Prime Minister also reviewed preparedness of the health sector. According to the Med Department, temperature ranging between 40 to 42 degrees is being reported in several parts of western Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Well, uh, this is going to be a hotter than usual summer and so the Prime Minister held a meeting today. It's an important meeting and in this meeting, uh, IMD officials were present and also P.K. Mishra, the Principal Secretary in the, to the Government of India and also, uh, you know, Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla was there and uh, advised in, in, in the... Um, uh, you know, Amit Khari was there. So, uh, very important people there. And uh, remember that the Health Ministry and the NDMA uh, have already issued uh, advisories with regard to what needs to be done to sort of ensure that there is adequate provisions of ORS and, uh, uh, you know, um, and that the hospitals are sort of equipped to handle these heat wave cases. Also, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, addressing the problems of forest fires and also elections are coinciding at this time. So, many people will be out, not just camping but also voting. The IMD department, like you rightly mentioned, has already issued heat wave condition warning for the part of India and as days proceed, you know, the similar conditions would also be witnessed in western part of India. That's something that IMD has already said. So this meeting was to ensure that the advisories of NDMA and Health Ministry 6 are sort of like, you know, uh, put in order and the Prime Minister, we are told, also took uh, you know took took stock of uh, you know uh, the situation in hospital hospitals for the prepar preparedness of uh, not just the hospitals but also health professionals and uh, also you know polling centers so ndma officials and also health ministry officials are present at this meeting Shifting focus now and hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy case. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any petition filed by the CBI in court regarding her arrest. Remember, Kavita is already in Tihar jail after ED arrested her in the same case. Just a few days back, CBI had questioned her in the excise policy case. 
and the agency is likely to seek her custody on Friday. Now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress for uh, calling BJP leaders dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency era. In an interview, Rajnath Singh said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Brain hemorrhage was in the hospital. So, in the hospital, there was no death. But I couldn't come to that. I didn't have parole. I didn't have parole. I didn't have parole. मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं Election news now and campaigning has picked up pace as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections scheduled next week. And the heat was on in Rajasthan as the biggest faces from BJP and Congress, Prime Minister Modi and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigned in the state. Prime Minister once again took a dig at Congress targeting them on corruption. Rahul Gandhi hit back calling it BJP's diversionary tactics. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue, drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for Eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the Eastern Rajasthan Canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan mein paani ke sankar ko bada banane wali Congress hi hai. केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है the Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east. Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Falodi, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. ये वायदा, ये वायदा नरेंद्र मोदी ने अग्निवीर बनाकर ये वायदा तोड़ा है, और ये अग्निवीर स्कीम जो है, भाई और बहनों, ये आर्मी को नहीं चाहिए थी, ये आर्मी ने नहीं कहा कि हमें अग्निवीर चाहिए, ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने पीएम ऑफिस से अग्निवीर योजना लागू की है जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी अग्निवीर योजना को हम रद्द कर देंगे राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट एंड द बीजेपी इज होपिंग टू स्कोर 25 आउट ऑफ 25 फॉर द टाइम इवन एस द कांग्रेस होप्स फॉर अ चेंज टू ओपन इट्स अकाउंट इन राजस्थान इन लोकसभा 2024 विद हर्षा कुमारी सिंह Bureau Report, NDTV. Now, former Congress spokesperson Rohan Gupta has joined BJP. He's among the series of former Congress spokespersons who've joined the party. Now, speaking to NDTV's Vasudha Venugopal, Rohan Gupta said that he did not like Congress's stance of launching personal attacks against wealth creators. One of the most uh, vocal, visible faces of the Congress Party, former spokesperson of the Congress Party, Rohan Gupta, has joined the BJP today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta, for speaking to NDTV. In the past few days, we've seen an exodus of uh, spokespersons. Many of them cited functional problems uh, as uh, functioning as uh, uh, you know, spokesperson of the Congress Party. You also named one person. Tell us, apart from the ideological contradictions, what were the functional operational problems that you faced? See, I'll tell you the way... Congress party is a big national party with a strong legacy and there is expectation of people that the voice of the people, the concerns of the people, the sentiments of the people are respected. When this gentleman, whom I have not named, I have just told that there is Ram in his name, he became the communication in charge and one of the allies of the party, he insults Sanatan. Sanatan is not about me or anybody or BJP, it's about our, our Sanskriti. If somebody questions Sanatan, disrespects Sanatan, do you feel it is too much to ask that we should counter or at least raise the strong voice against it? No. You tell me, you give me one press if it has been addressed. They are questioning me today. I am challenging you, tell me one press why it has not been addressed if Sanatan is questioned. Is this too much to ask for? They have formed one Gadbandan in name of the country. And you are making people like Kejriwal as part of it, whom you have accused like anything as being called traitor, being with Khalistan for corruption, excise can. Congress party has done the press conferences, the leaders of Congress party. 
what is it that you have to ally with those people and what kind of message you will take to ground when we go to debate we ask this question to us as a soldier of party obviously we cannot question but at least inside we ask the question that are we have that sanctity you are not allying with them in punjab what message you are sending there is no communication so i think it is like comedy of error if your narrative is not clear and there is too much of contradiction when you have contradiction people will not trust you we are going on national tv to show the trust of people in the party to communicate the vision of the party but if we are not heard if we give them the ground feedback and they are not heard they are so arrogant ke nahi ye sab chalo aap apna kaam karo jo bola jata ho karo i think nothing is left for us to uh, continue mr gupta in the last few years we've also seen congress take a very strong position against some corporates and also wealth creators would you say that was problematic for the party and also for the country i think again i am saying uh, the same wealth creators you know they are contributing in congress run states you tell me if you are doing one press conference attacking one industrialist from delhi and maybe after two days you see the same industrialist doing mou with your statement in uh, chief minister in rajasthan or telangana how would you go and sell this to the people if you have question on other party you question on their policy how does create wealth creators being attacked like this on personal level has help party you tell me one benefit party has received by attacking the industrialists i'm not talking about one particular thing but this shows the leftist mindset ne congress was never like this congress has been after the liberalization congress was has promoted the policy and now you are totally against that आपका जो कोर था वो आपने छोड़ दिया आप पूरा लेफ्टिस्ट हो रहे हैं आप जो लोग देश विरोधी उसके साथ आप जा रहे हैं आप सनोथन के विरोध आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनीथिंग इट्स नॉट अबाउट पार्टीज बैड सिचुएशन इलेक्शंस आर वॉन एंड लॉस दैट्स नॉट अ बिग थिंग बट वेन यू आर लिविंग योर कोर आइडियोलॉजी यू आर रिमूविंग एवरी थिंग आर द मेन थ्री कोर इशूज रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सनातन राष्ट्रवाद एंड एंड द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द पीपल हुआ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द जी डी पी ऑफ द कंट्री आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा आप और दूसरा चौथी चीज फॉर पीपल लाइक अस हुआ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कैनॉट मेंटेन अवर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट ऑल्टो अवर डिग्निटी ऑल्सो वाई शुड वी बी देर नथिंग एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर यू ऑल्सो टॉक्ट अबाउट योर एलिंग फादर एंड डिड द कांग्रेस पार्टी रीच आउट टू यू एट सम पॉइंट एब्सोल्युटली नॉट नो बडी कॉल्ड मी ड्यूरिंग माय वर्स्ट प्लेस एंड दैट वाज द ट्रिगर पॉइंट सी I understand the point when party gives me ticket you know it is my responsibility so the day he was admitted and i had to give my ticket back i spoke to the leaders and i did that thing i i wrote that letter on the prescription the back of the prescription in gujarati that was my majboori next day i addressed the press i told in front of media that i have no objection with anybody whoever party appoints as the candidate i will completely support them i for the, the opening of the karela i paid money also that okay no this is my responsibility if anything bad is there in my head why should i do that after that also i was convincing my father that please allow me to fight the election i had to kill my aspirations one side to fight the election for my family and other side the same people are doing conspiracies against me you tell me if you have contributed 15 years for one party and they don't even trust you not even call you in four five days how should i save my face how can i be there in that party after that because i was very sure that same gentleman has sold the narrative that this is done purposefully after that i had no right to be with the party thank you so much thank you sir. News from the south now and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhunagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore Popular actor and a powerful name in television production Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharad Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharad Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray in the sense to get involved in politics it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through 
is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamar Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhanagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together, make Virudhanagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhanagar, Peter Agar for NDTV. We'll slip into a short break at this point. Don't go anywhere. Go As this is all about gadgets, I have always have multiple gadgets for you. And the second one this time is this, the all-new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Now, the Edge series, just by the name, it's you know, obvious that we get screen with the screen, it's with this 3D curved edge design. At the same time, phone is also having specs that are cutting edge. And in this phone, mein bhi, we have something special because there are many world's first and world's only features packed inside this phone. Uh, what we have is this nicely crafted, very sleek phone where the frame is made up of aluminium. The back, what we have is this special vegan leather. It smells nice as well and the phone inside packs the punch because we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. What we have is a 4500 mAh battery but the best part is this phone supports up to 125 watts of fast charging and the charger comes inside the box. At the same time, this also supports up to 50 watts of wireless charging. You can also charge your other smartphone accessories because this phone may reverse wireless charging bhi hai and then the camera and the screen, they are pretty unique because yahan pe they both are Pantone certified. The screen goes up to 144 hertz and the kind of colors you see, they're all certified by Pantone. And you know Pantone being the pioneer in the color space, so we colors, milte hai, they are very accurate. At the same time, what we have are like you know precisely accurate skin tones for all your shots because your rear camera se photos are hai, they are also certified by Pantone for skin tones. So the phone feels like a, uh, a fresh device with all these unique specifications packed inside. Let's have a close look about this Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Motorola's Edge 50 Pro has finally hit the market and under the hood is packing some serious heat. So, let's see quickly why this phone has all the potential to be your next upgrade. While 50 megapixel ka front camera is no joke, but expect absolutely crisp selfies from it and also do not forget that you get a triple camera setup which makes a 50 megapixel ka main sensor, hai, 13 megapixel
मेगापिक्सल्स का अल्ट्रा वाइट सेंसर है जो मैक्रो का भी काम करता है देन टेन मेगा पिक्सल का टेलीफोटो इट्स लाइक है मिनी फोटो स्टूडियो इन योर पॉकेट नो मोर सर्चिंग फॉर चार्जर्स विद मोट्रोला एच फिफ्टी प्रो मोट्रोला का सॉफ्टवेयर ऑलरेडी क्लीन है हेलो यू एक्स को हम काफी लुक फॉरवर्ड कर रहे हैं एंड थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ मेजर अपडेट्स एंड फोर ईयर्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटी पैचेस है आपका फोन अब सेफ और सिक्योर रहेगा टिल द टाइम यू डिसाइड टू अपग्रेड टू दी नेक्स्ट फोन बेस मॉडल स्टार्ट एट थर्टी वन ट्रिपल नाइन बट मोट्रोला डज है कपल ऑफ लॉन्च ऑफर्स इफ यू लुकिंग फॉर कैमरा पावर स्मूथ परफॉर्मेंस एंड फोन दैट लास्ट दी मोट्रोला एच फिफ्टी प्रो साउंड लाइक अ वेरी सॉलिड चॉइस इट्स गॉट दट मसालेदार मिक्स ऑफ स्पेक्स एंड फीचर्स दैट इम्प्रेस इवन द पिकेस ऑफ टेक इंथ्यूजियस दोस्तों स्टार्टिंग एट रुपीज थर्टी वन थाउजेंड ट्रिपल एंड रुपीज दिस लेटेस्ट मोटो एच फिफ्टी प्रो रियली पैक्स अलॉट NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the Welcome back now six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahendragarh police have arrested the school bus driver principal and school secretary the bus driver was allegedly drunk and speeding this tragic incident has once again thrown the spotlight on rules on rules followed while selecting staff for school buses <laughs> grief anger and despair at 13 year old vanshu's home in haryana's mahendragarh vanshu's grieving parents who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village feel they have nothing to live for his grandfather who sent him off to school this morning is still in shock kal ki baat hai kal mai beedi pe raha tha वो मेरे को बोल रहे थे दादाजी बीड़ी स्वास्थ्य के लिए आने का ठीक बहुत कुछ उससे उम्मीद थी सभी तो पर पानी वंश इज अमंग दिक्स यंग स्टूडेंट्स किल्ड बाय ड्रंक ड्राइवर हु रैम्ड अ प्राइवेट स्कूल बस इन टू अ ट्री सीरियसली इंजरिंग ओवर ट्वेंटी स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बोर्ड नॉट ओनली वॉज द ड्राइवर ड्रंक but the school bus was not fit to ferry students we have report that the driver the driver to medical to come here and the baki first medical report ke aane ke baad hi ho payegi ki wo drug kha ke that driver ka medical ho gaya wo wahan ke document hai dastavez hai uske regarding bhi proper jaanch ki jayegi aur agar aap mein koi trutiya koi kami aa rahi hai to wo bhi hamari baat se le sakte hain The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina, and the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The the insides of of the bus here, absolutely tragic. and absolutely devastating because all that is left you know here uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor this was this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident and in fact the remains of the bus scattered all around here you know the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who who were injured who lost their lives here in fact uh, you know shoes also lying here school shoes वो सौ सौ की स्पीड कम से कम होगी सौ 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 की स्पीड आराम से जी और यहाँ पर जब आए तो बच्चे घायल पड़े थे बुरी तरीके से बुरी तरह चल आए तो वहाँ रही थी हाँ। इधर स्कूल के स्टाफ आ गया इधर गांव ग्रामीण आ गए पदार भी वो तो आर पी के है जी। तो वहां से सब लोग आकर फिर बच्चों को लेकर बस उठाई फिर वो बच्चे आधे नीचे दब रहे थे उनका हालात गंभीर थी उनकी दिस इज अ जी एल पब्लिक स्कूल वन ऑफ द फ्यू प्राइवेट स्कूल इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट विच वॉज लॉक्ट अप soon after the incident with the principal a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police but there are many unanswered questions why was the school open on a government holiday why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school how was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children ye ji laparwahi to sabse badi hai ki aaj gazetted holiday hai aur school chal ke ho raha hai फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि 
आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पाँच साढ़े पाँच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके The children who died have turned into statistics already but for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam and the others who have been scarred for life this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children in mahendragarh with camera person zevia thomas vedant for indi tv isme humne driver ko jo gaadi ka driver us gaadi ko chala raha tha damendra usko humne arrest kar liya hai aur uske alawa is school ki principal hai dipti aur anya staff ka jo main member hai hoshiyar singh jo is sector ke about hai school mein aur wo gaadi wagera ka sara din ki apni responsibility hai in logon ki jisko inhone pura tarah se theek nahi kiya hai और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पे हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने कर ली है और जो छः किसी में टोटल डेथ हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडी हमने उनके घर के हवाले बारिश आगे कर दी थी International news now and O.J. Simpson, the NFL Hall of Fame star whose 1995 acquittal in the so-called trial of the century for the brutal murders of his ex-wife and a male friend gripped the world, has died. He was 76 and was battling cancer. His popularity grew with the post-NFL career as an actor and an ad pitchman, where his appearances made him one of the most recognizable faces in the country. But fame turned to infamy after the savage murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman in a suburb of Los Angeles. His acquittal in October 1995 after a nine-month trial was greeted with disbelief by many Americans who had followed every twist and turn in the arguments during the trial. So it's time for us to wrap up the show. But before we leave, images coming in from across the country of celebrations of Eid al-Fitr. Uh, as I said, videos and images are coming in. And two of Bollywood's biggest stars, Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan, were seen celebrating the occasion with their fans. Take a look and thanks for watching. The 2024 campaign hot side. Late Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. Carnival of Democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you count on us. You say, celebrate the ordinary in your child. Celebrate their ordinariness.
or at least observe their orderiness because once they are seen by you for who they are, that's going to create a child with better self-worth and that unconsciously we are looking at the child that we want them to be or that we're trying to get them to be or the future that we see before for them and not who they are. To celebrate the ordinary seems so radical. And why is it so hard and why is it so important, especially today? Well, it's so important because it's the fact that we are all ordinary. And I think that is the human plague right now, our refusal to accept that we're ordinary because we're all searching to be significant on social media, in our, in our worlds today. We're all basically screaming, see me, see me, see me, aren't I important, aren't I significant? Guess what? No, we're no more important than the next being. We are no more extraordinary. We are all ordinary. If we accept that, here's why it's important to accept that. Because then we can let go of the desire to control our children or ourselves to get external validation. And we can learn to settle into our own being and learn to be connected to our inner world, our inner sense of self and be okay in the enoughness of who we are. The moment we keep saying, oh, we're not you know, ordinary, but we have to be something very, very special, we are creating a dysfunctional relationship with ourselves and with the outside world because we're always going to think we're not, not good enough and use the outside world to get validation. So I always tell parents to tell their children, you can tell them that they are unique. We're all unique. You have long hair, I have short hair, you have green eyes, you have blue eyes, that's fine. But no one is more special. I think it is one of the most harmful things to say to a child that they are special. And Eid celebrations across the country, Bollywood's Khans celebrate Eid along with their fans. A top focus, amid the heat wave warning issued by the Med Department, Prime Minister Modi held a high-level meeting. He reviewed the preparedness for the period between April to June as the temperature is above normal uh, in several parts of the country. In fact, Prime Minister also reviewed preparedness of the health sector. According to the Med Department, temperature ranging between 40 to 42 degrees is being reported in several parts of western Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Well, uh, this is going to be a hotter than usual summer and so the Prime Minister held a meeting today. It's an important meeting and in this meeting uh, IMD officials were present and also PK Mishra, the Principal Secretary in the, to the Government of India and also, uh, you know, Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla was there and uh, advised in, in, in the... Um, uh, you know, Amit Khari was there. So, uh, very important people there. And uh, remember that the Health Ministry and the NDMA uh, have already issued uh, advisories with regard to what needs to be done to sort of ensure that there is adequate provisions of ORS and, uh, uh, you know, um, and that the, the hospitals are sort of equipped to handle these heat wave cases. Also, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, addressing the problems of forest fires and also elections are coinciding at this time. So, many people will be out, not just camping but also voting. The IMD department, like you rightly mentioned, has already issued heat wave condition warning for the part of India and as days proceed you know the similar conditions would also be witnessed in western part of India that's something that IMD has already said so this meeting was to ensure that the advisories of NDMA and health ministry six are sort of like you know uh, put in order and the prime minister we are told also took uh, you know took took stock of uh, you know uh, the situation in hospital hospitals for the prepar preparedness of uh, not just the hospitals but also health professionals and uh, also you know polling centers so ndma officials and also health ministry officials are present at this meeting Shifting focus now and hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy case. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any petition filed by the CBI in court regarding her arrest. Remember, Kavita is already in Tihar jail after ED arrested her in the same case. Just a few days back, CBI had questioned her in the excise policy case. And the agency is likely to seek her custody on Friday.
Now, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress for uh, calling BJP leaders dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency era. In an interview, Rajnath Singh said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Brain hemorrhage was तो 27 दिन हॉस्पिटल में रही डेथ हो गई लेकिन मैं आ नहीं सका उसमें मेरी रिहाई नहीं हुई मुझे पेरोल भी नहीं दिया गया पेरोल नहीं दिया गया मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं Election news now and campaigning has picked up pace as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections scheduled next week. And the heat was on in Rajasthan as the biggest faces from BJP and Congress, Prime Minister Modi and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigned in the state. Prime Minister once again took a dig at Congress targeting them on corruption. Rahul Gandhi hit back calling it BJP's diversionary tactics. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue, drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for Eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the Eastern Rajasthan Canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan mein pani ke sankar ko bada banane wali Congress hi hai. केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है the Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Falodi, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. ये वायदा, ये वायदा नरेंद्र मोदी ने अग्निवीर बनाकर ये वायदा तोड़ा है, और ये अग्निवीर स्कीम जो है, भाई और बहनों, ये आर्मी को नहीं चाहिए थी। ये आर्मी ने नहीं कहा कि हमें अग्निवीर चाहिए। ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने पीएम ऑफिस से अग्निवीर योजना लागू की है जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी अग्निवीर योजना को हम रद्द कर देंगे राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट एंड द बीजेपी इज होपिंग टू स्कोर 25 आउट ऑफ 25 फॉर द टाइम इवन एज द कांग्रेस होप्स फॉर अ चेंज टू ओपन इट्स अकाउंट इन राजस्थान इन लोकसभा 2024 विद हर्षा कुमारी सिंह the former Congress spokesperson Rohan Gupta has joined BJP. He's among the series of former Congress spokespersons who've joined the party. Now, speaking to NDTV's Vasudha Venugopal, Rohan Gupta said that he did not like Congress's stance of launching personal attacks against wealth creators. One of the most uh, vocal, visible faces of the Congress Party, former spokesperson of the Congress Party, Rohan Gupta, has joined the BJP today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta, for speaking to NDTV. In the past few days, we've seen an exodus of uh, spokespersons. Many of them cited functional problems uh, as uh, functioning as uh, uh, you know, spokesperson of the Congress Party. You also named one person. Tell us, apart from the ideological contradictions, what were the functional operational problems that you faced? See, I'll tell you the way... Congress party is a big national party with a strong legacy and there is expectation of people that the voice of the people, the concerns of the people, the sentiments of the people are respected. When this gentleman, whom I have not named, I have just told that there is Ram in his name, he became the communication in charge and one of the allies of the party, he insults Sanatan. Sanatan is not about me or anybody or BJP, it's about our, our Sanskriti. If somebody questions Sanatan, disrespects Sanatan, do you feel it is too much to ask that we should counter or at least raise the strong voice against it? No. You tell me, you give me one press if it has been addressed. They are questioning me today. I am challenging you, tell me one press why it has not been addressed if Sanatan is questioned. Is this too much to ask for? They have formed one Gadbandan in name of the country. And you are making people like Kejriwal as part of it, whom you have accused like anything as being called traitor, being with Khalistan for corruption, excise can. Congress party has done the press conferences, the leaders of Congress party. 
what is it that you have to ally with those people and what kind of message you will take to ground when we go to debate we ask this question to us as a soldier of party obviously we cannot question but at least inside we ask the question that are we have that sanctity you are not allying with them in punjab what message you are sending there is no communication so i think it is like comedy of error if your narrative is not clear and there is too much of contradiction when you have contradiction people will not trust you we are going on national tv to show the trust of people in the party to communicate the vision of the party but if we are not heard if we give them the ground feedback and they are not heard they are so arrogant ke nahi ye sab chalo aap apna kaam karo jo bola jata ho karo i think nothing is left for us to uh, continue mr gupta in the last few years we've also seen congress take a very strong position against some corporates and also wealth creators would you say that was problematic for the party and also for the country i think again i am saying uh, the same wealth creators you know they are contributing in congress run states you tell me if you are doing one press conference attacking one industrialist from delhi and maybe after two days you see the same industrialist doing mou with your statement in uh, chief minister in rajasthan or telangana how would you go and sell this to the people if you have question on other party you question on their policy how does create wealth creators being attacked like this on personal level has help party you tell me one benefit party has received by attacking the industrialists i'm not talking about one particular thing but this shows the leftist mindset ne congress was never like this congress has been after the liberalization congress was has promoted the policy and now you are totally against that आपका जो कोर था वो आपने छोड़ दिया आप पूरा लेफ्टिस्ट हो रहे हैं आप जो लोग देश विरोधी उसके साथ आप जा रहे हैं आप सनोथन का विरोध आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनीथिंग इट्स नॉट अबाउट पार्टीज बैड सिचुएशन इलेक्शंस आर वॉन एंड लॉस दैट्स नॉट अ बिग थिंग बट वेन यू आर लिविंग योर कोर आइडियोलॉजी यू आर रिमूविंग एवरी थिंग वॉट आर द मेन थ्री कोर इशूज रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सनातन राष्ट्रवाद एंड एंड द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द पीपल हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द जी ऑफ द कंट्री आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा आप और दूसरा चौथी चीज फॉर पीपल लाइक अस हुव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कैनॉट मेंटेन अवर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट all to our dignity also why should we be there nothing at the cost of self respect last question sir you also uh, talked about your ailing father and did the congress party reach out to you at some point absolutely not nobody called me during my worst phase and that was the trigger point see i understand the point when party gives me ticket you know it is my responsibility so the day he was admitted and i had to give my ticket back i spoke to the leaders and i did that thing i i wrote that letter on the prescription the back of the prescription in gujarati that was my majburi next day i addressed the press i told in front of media that i have no objection with anybody whoever party appoints as the candidate i will completely support them i for the, the opening of the karela i paid money also that okay no this is my responsibility if anything bad is there in my head why should i do that after that also i was convincing my father that please allow me to fight the election i had to kill my aspirations one side to fight the election for my family and other side the same people are doing conspiracies against me you tell me if you have contributed 15 years for one party and they don't even trust you not even call you in four five days how should i save my face how can i be there in that party after that because i was very sure that same gentleman has sold the narrative that this is done purposefully after that i had no right to be with the party thank you so much thanks sir thanks you News from the south now, and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhunagar, where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production. Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharad Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharad Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray in the sense to get involved in politics it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through 
is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be their shops will be closed and we will not they will not have we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhanagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhanagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhanagar, Peter Agra for NDTV. We'll slip into a short break at this point. Don't go anywhere. Go a debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Date, I'm sure we have tons and tons of gadgets here at least we have a mobile phone and mobile phones are a lot of content create especially for Instagram or YouTube you'd see many people recording their videos doing some commentary or they record vlogs and for those Microphone is very important if you have a mobile phone camera then you will record everything record but the audio is also very important. Now, while we have multiple different kinds of microphones, you all content creators need to pay attention to one thing, which is the pickup pattern of a particular microphone. Because there are different types of microphones for all different kinds of usage. One is a cardioid microphone, where the front of the mic is where it's most sensitive and this back and sides ko block kar deta hai so that if you are in the shore wale area mein hai, the mic is still going to focus on what you are saying which you are saying the shore of your face is very low if we go one step more, what we have is a microphone with a pickup pattern of super cardioid, where it becomes a narrow pickup pattern so that your voice over your voiceover, your commentary, you know, could be uh, very uh, important in terms of recording podcasts. Where you say what you say, precisely captured, but if there is a lot of noise, it becomes a lot of noise and you don't get any noise. But then, sometimes, as content creators we would want to capture these ambient uh, sounds humko batana hota hai ki aas paas kya halchal hai how exactly is the environment aur uske liye you can use a microphone jahan pe the pickup pattern is omnidirectional which simply means ki charo taraf ki jo bhi aawazein hain microphone sabhi ko capture karne wala hai equally so 
mic might look like a very basic device but even in these microphones we have different varieties and you can use this tip to ensure ki jo aap content bana rahe hain wo bahut zyada acha banta jaye some people say the metaverse will only be virtual one day this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections but even in this maze of the future you can't wish away health it's time to become Welcome back. Now, six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahendragarh. Police have arrested the school bus driver, principal, and school secretary. The bus driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. This tragic incident has once again thrown the spotlight on rules, on rules followed while selecting staff for school buses. <laughs> Grief, anger. and despair at 13 year old vanshu's home in haryana's mahendragarh vanshu's grieving parents who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village feel they have nothing to live for his grandfather who sent him off to school this morning is still in shock kal ki baat hai kal main beedi pe raha tha वो मेरे को बोल रहे थे दादाजी बीड़ी स्वास्थ्य के लिए ठीक बहुत कुछ उससे उम्मीद थी वंश इज अमंग दिक्स यंग स्टूडेंट्स किल बाय ड्रंक ड्राइवर हु रैम द प्राइवेट स्कूल बस इन टू अ ट्री सीरियसली इंजरिंग ओवर ट्वेंटी स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बोर्ड नॉट ओनली वॉज द ड्राइवर ड्रंक but the school bus was not fit to ferry students we have report that the driver the driver to medical to aa gaya hai aur ek baar ki pushti medical report ki aane ke baad hi ho payegi ki wo drug kha ke driver ka medical ho gaya hai wahan ke documents hai dastaveez hai uske regarding bhi proper jaanch ki jayegi aur agar aap mein koi trutiyan koi kami aa nikal aaye to wo bhi hamari baat se le sakte hain The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina, and the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The the insides of of the bus here, absolutely tragic. and absolutely devastating because all that is left you know here uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor this was this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident and in fact the remains of the bus scattered all around here you know the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who who were injured who lost their lives here in fact uh, you know shoes also lying here school shoes वो सौ 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 की स्पीड से कम से कम होगी सौ 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 की स्पीड से आराम से जी और यहाँ पर जब आए तो बच्चे घायल पड़े थे बुरी तरीके से बुरी तरह चल चल आए तो वहाँ मात्र थी इधर स्कूल के स्टाफ आ गया इधर गांव ग्रामीण आ गए पदार भी बहुत आर पी के है तो वहां से सब लोग आकर फिर बच्चों को ले बस उठाई फिर वो बच्चे आधे नीचे दब रहे थे इसी से उस साइड पड़ी वो दब रहे उन्हें काले हालात गंभीर से उनकी दिस इज अ जीएल पब्लिक स्कूल वन ऑफ द फ्यू प्राइवेट स्कूल्स इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट व्हिच वाज लॉक्ड अप soon after the incident with the principal a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police but there are many unanswered questions why was the school open on a government holiday why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school how was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children ye ji lapravahi to sabse badi hai ki aaj girls street holiday hai aur school chal ke ho raha hai फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्र भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पाँच साढ़े पाँच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियाँ एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके The children who died have turned into statistics already but for the families of Vansh, Ricky 
Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam and the others who have been scarred for life, this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children? In Mahendragarh with camera person Xavier Thomas, Vedant for NDTV. <laughs> और उसके अलावा इस स्कूल की प्रिंसिपल है डिप्टी और अन्य स्टाफ का जो मेन मेंबर है वो सियार सिंह जो इस सेक्टर के अबाउट है स्कूल में और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनकी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ी और बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की अरेस्टिंग हमने कर ली है और जो छः इसमें टोटल डेथ हुई थी इसमें हमने उस सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडियाँ हमने उनके घर के हवाले वारिश आगे कर दी थी International news now and O.J. Simpson, the NFL Hall of Fame star whose 1995 acquittal in the so-called trial of the century for the brutal murders of his ex-wife and a male friend gripped the world, has died. He was 76 and was battling cancer. His popularity grew with the post-NFL career as an actor and an ad pitchman, where his appearances made him one of the most recognizable faces in the country. But fame turned to infamy after the savage murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman in a suburb of Los Angeles. His acquittal in October 1995 after a nine-month trial was greeted with disbelief by many Americans who had followed every twist and turn in the arguments during the trial. So it's time for us to wrap up the show. But before we leave, images coming in from across the country of celebrations of Eid al-Fitr. Uh, as I said, videos and images are coming in. And two of Bollywood's biggest stars, Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan, were seen celebrating the occasion with their fans. Take a look and thanks for watching. शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर वैसे टेलीस्कोप से याद आया डिड यू नो द जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप ये एक टेलीस्कोप तो है एट द सेम टाइम इट आल्सो एक्ट्स लाइक अ टाइम मशीन आपको लग रहा होगा टेलीस्कोप टाइम मशीन का आपस में लिंक क्या है Well, friends, link is quite interesting because आपको पता है light travels at a certain speed. You know what's the speed of light? Roughly three lakh kilometers per second, approximately. मतलब sunlight जब सूरज से निकल के earth तक पहुंचती है, it takes approximately eight minutes for that. Now this uh, James Webb Space Telescope, जो कि हमको चीजें दिखाता है दूर-दूर के distant stars and galaxies, ये जो हमको images दिखाता है, these are not real time because light coming from these far away galaxies इनको काफी time लगता है उस telescope तक पहुंचने में. So essentially what we are seeing is data from billions of years ago. मतलब ये जो James Webb Space Telescope है, ये हमको दिखा सकता है बहुत uh, beginning वाली images या details of all these galaxies and stars so just think about it that a telescope can also act like a time machine NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards NDTV reigns supreme Sanjay this is NDTV and you're watching NDTV 24-7.
Hello, Moto. Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, the former Congress spokesperson Rohan Gupta has joined the BJP today, marking the defection of yet another visible opposition face to the ruling party this election season. He joins us on the program in a few moments. Rohan, along with some other leaders, joined the BJP in the presence of Union Minister Hardeep Puri. Hitting out at the Congress, a party he's been associated with for nearly 15 years, he said it's become directionless and was full of contradictions, leading to a loss of credibility. We did reach out to the Congress to offer their comment. Join us on this program. They declined. Also on the show, we have two years to save the world. A dire warning by the UN climate chief, who says that we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble. Simon Steele's dire warning in London is this. He says, and I quote, I'll be candid. Blame shifting is not a strategy. Sidelining climate isn't a solution to a crisis that will decimate every G20 economy and has already started to hurt. But first, uh, our big guest this evening, the former Congress spokesperson Rohan Gupta, has joined the Bharatiya Janata Party ahead of the uh, forthcoming Lok Sabha elections. He follows Gaurav. Uh, uh, Vallabh Gupta, an ex-key communications aide to the Congress President. Uh, thanks very much uh, for being with us, Rohan. Now, you say the uh, Congress Party, Rohan, has lost direction and is full of contradictions. What are those contradictions, in your opinion? So, Vishnu, if you see the way the communication department is handled for the last two years, from the gentleman, I, I would not like to name, from the time he's been made the in charge of communication department. There are contradictions on all the points, you know, whether it is about uh, not opposing the insult of Sanatan. Obviously, it is about the sentiment of the country. You cannot ignore any insult done by your allies, and you have to counter that. If you are a national party, Congress is not a regional party. You have to ensure your responsibilities and should have countered that. All of us, all the spokespersons strongly represented on this cause, but we were not heard. That is point number one. Point number two, they have formed the alliance in name of the country. And in the same alliance, you have Mr. Kejriwal, whom the party has accused of being with Khalistani terrorists, whom the party has accused of corruption, whom the party press, no, press conferences have been organized, accuse him in the excise card, and then you have to protect him by organizing the rally. Don't you feel that is a contradiction? I'm talking about EVM. Two elections are won by Congress party through EVM. You are questioning EVM? Yesterday, Mr. Sam Pitroda, he, he told that the middle class will have to pay additional taxes. And you are talking about the price rise. You don't you feel that is the contradiction? The industrialists, you know, the men, the industrialists whom the people attacked from Delhi sitting here in AICC, the same industrialist signs MOU in Rajasthan and Telangana. Don't you feel that is a contradiction? See, we should need to understand we are the people who are facing people on ground. We are people representing the party on media. Whatever feedback we get, if that is not heard by the party and is left to one person who is completely leftist, who has ensured the narrative of parties completely not heard of, don't you feel that is painful? See, as a party soldier, when till the time I was there in party for 15 years, I have never questioned that on public forum. Whatever way we felt good, bad, yes, it was our responsibility to ensure that party stand, whether I like it or not, I represent it. But, you know, there is a limit to it, you know, beyond a point. You cannot face people with the same narrative. You are killing the party which was called the centrist party. You have totally converted that party into leftist party. You are supporting CPI, which Congress party has opposed for 60 years. Please understand that if Congress party was in power for 60 years, that is because of the ideology of nationalism and being center. You but are converted you talk... party as a leftist. You are not in the center. You are against, you are going, your policies are against Rashtravad nationalism. Why, why the situation of Congress Party is because of these decisions? No, so I understand, but you, know, you use the word, Rohan, and Rohan, one second. One and a half years, it has gone to the extreme level. Rohan, one second, but ideologically, when did you, you use that word just now, ideologically, when did you start to realize that you stood eye to eye with what the BJP stands for? Because all this time, you've always stood entirely for the Congress. At what stage did you realize that, you know, you stood with them? See, I'll tell you, uh, uh, Ideologically, the way this decline has started from the appointment of this gentleman as a communication in charge. I have been in with the party for the last 15 years, 
have represented party on various roles, but it was never so bad, you know. We, we understand, like if you remember, Remember famous 2017 campaign where Mr. Rahul Gandhi ensured in the minds of people are purely positive. But after that, 2018 Rajasthan, I was the media in charge. We ensured that the victory of the party. 2019, I was the national. Uh, after the elections, I was made national chairman of social media for three years. During the COVID time, we ensured that the narrative was not bad. But after 2022, you you mark all the decisions where there are blunders by parties communication being in terms of setting narrative. This is to totally against the sentiment of the country. You cannot have, you know, narrative which is totally against the country. How can we face that on ground? Rohan, not attending the Ram Temple consecration, the Congress felt um, that this was a political event, that the BJP was taking advantage of it. But you now say that you have a problem with them not going. Is that one of the reasons why you quit? See, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Vishnu. See, maybe parties at that level, if they were thinking that it was a political event and all, why can't Congress party's leader go next day, just stand in the queue and do the darshan? Why can't they do that? Don't you feel that was possible? See, it is about the sentiment. When you are saying no, you are sending strong message to the people that we, once you are saying that, okay, we respect the verdict of Supreme Court, right? On the other hand, you are not going to the event. Then what message you are going, going to give? So, you know, you cannot have this kind of narrative. The people of this country are very smart. See, you are raising the voice when something happens against particular community. I'll give you an example of Mr. Danish uh, of UP, right? Something was spoken against him. Uh, Rahul Gandhi ji hugged him. Same time this another thing happened, not, no reaction. So you cannot have this kind of approach. You are a national party. You should not forget that you are not a regional party. You cannot take people's narrative for granted. You have to be sensitive towards the people's call to you. People yeah. expect a lot from opposition party. And as a spokesperson, we have to face that. We are people who go on ground. We get feedback of people. We communicate it to party. It has to be bottom top. It cannot be top bottom. The communication of the party, if it is top bottom, you are not touching the grounds. You are against the public sentiment. That is the whole issue. Rohan, I get it. One final question. Recently, another former Congress uh, spokesperson, Gaurav Vallabh, joined the BJP. Is your decision absolutely independent of his? Absolutely independent. See, I'll tell you, Vishnu, we, the Congress spokesperson, it's not about only Gaurav or me. There are all of them. When we talk off record, I am telling you, this is the sentiment of each and every spokesperson. And Vishnu, this is not difficult to understand. As a citizen of the country, the people ask, Are yaar, aapke netao ko kon advice de ra? Ye kyon itna nahi samaj rahe? This is the feedback we get from ground. It's not about me or it's not about Gaurav or it's not about anybody else. This is something which is written on the wall. Why can't they read it? This is the basic question. Something which is written on the wall, why can't they read it? And there is a limit to which, uh, Vishnu, we can defend it, right? We are also uh, people who believe in God. I am the pure Sanatani. Then obviously it feels bad. I am not telling today because I am joining BJP. This pain was there. But as a soldier of the party, I never represented in public forum. I and mean, this pain is not of me. Maybe all the Congress spokesperson, maybe all Congress workers. I have maybe today I have left the party. I have 15 years of hard work. Party gave me opportunity. I gave my work with the full of the honesty. But maybe by going down, Going out of it, at least I'm putting voice of people in, in public okay. forum. You cannot run party like this. You cannot ignore public sentiment. You cannot ignore the, the, the voice of the workers. This is what is going to happen if you are going to do that. There is no surprise why we are talking that this situation of Congress has happened. This is a grand old party where people have voted for you for 60 years and you are not understanding the sentiment of the ground. That is something strongly wrong. All right. Well, uh... You know, thanks very much, Rohan, uh, for joining us, expressing yourself over there. We did try and reach out to the Congress to react to, uh, to Rohan, but they've chosen not to. Good luck with your next political innings, Rohan. Thanks very much for being with us on the program tonight. Next up, we have two years to save the world. That's a dire warning by the UN climate chief, who says we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble. Simon Steele's dire warning in London is this. He says, I'll be candid, blame shifting is not a strategy. Listen in to what he said. Some of you may think the title of today's event is overly dramatic, melodramatic even. So let me start by explaining why the next two years are so essential in saving the planet. First, we know the stakes. You've heard me talk about 
um, time and time again the shattering heat um, and massive damage that climate change is causing to our economies and how there is no room for half measures. Let's take all of that as a given. Second, we are at the start of a race which will determine the biggest winners in a new clean energy economy. Well, joining us now, Dr. Aruna Vaghosh. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Abhilash Mohanty, both climate uh, experts. Thank you both very much for being with us. Dr. Ghosh, let me come to you first. Um, what's really made headlines from the UN um, you know, climate change expert chief over there is that two-year period, that we have to start fixing things in two years or it could be catastrophic. Why the, the number of two years? Uh, why is that imperative? Vishnu, uh, we are breaching uh, every month at least one percentage point or more of the remaining global carbon space. So within 100 months, the remaining global carbon space that keeps us within 1.5 C is going to get breached. But what we are I seeing already is the kind of extreme weather events that are occurring. In India, three quarters of our districts and our hotspots are extreme climate events. Uh, we see that... Uh, 11% uh, of our tehsils, the sub-district administration, are now seeing a reduction in their precipitation. These are all signs that the climate crisis is very much upon us. Why the next two years? It's because we've got to peak the emissions and start bending the curve down, similar to the pandemic. You can't let the emissions keep going up. You need to peak it, plateau it, and then pull the curve down. And that's why it is now a, the, the acuteness of the crisis is coming up against the chronic nature of the climate challenge that we all face. Abhinash, where exactly are we from a global standpoint? Because this is a global story in terms of capping emissions. It, I mean, it just seems unrealistic to expect this to take place in the next two years, let, let, alone, let alone it actually coming down. Abhinash, can you hear me? Sorry, Vishnu, I don't think I can hear you. All right, we'll come back to him in a moment. Would you like to take that, uh, Dr. Ghosh? Yes, I mean, we've already, in a way, breached uh, the 1.5C uh, target. So what we are now looking at is perhaps 1.6 Celsius above uh, <clears throat> pre-industrial levels. So when we look at these global average averages, we forget that in, some, in tropical regions such as India, the actual increases in average surface, average surface temperatures are even higher. Uh, if you combine heat combined with humidity, say our coastal cities, there we are seeing four or five degrees above normal. So this will have an impact on human health. It'll have an impact on agricultural productivity. It'll have an impact on the, on the integrity of our infrastructure. So this is why it is so critical. Now the question is, is, is it possible to start pulling the curve down? We've got to connect the global climate action to local action. And one way to do this is actually combining action on clean air with action on climate change. Sure. Yesterday, Simon Steele made the statement. Today, the Our Common Air Commission has argued that combining clean air action with climate action, with public health, with the economy, actually delivers more than 30 times the return on investment compared to each dollar invested. Yeah. So how do we get the World Bank, which is going to meet for its uh, spring meetings next, uh, next week, to start thinking about investing in clean energy infrastructure, clean transportation infrastructure, clean air investments, that then yield the climate benefits. The citizens will then begin to see the, the return on that investment and the change in their lifestyles much sooner than getting to net zero. That's the connection we need to make between the local action, local delivery, and the global change that we all seek. Uh, Abhinash, just a couple of days back, there was this very important verdict in the Supreme Court which said that we have a right uh, to, to clean air uh, and we have a right against climate change as well. Uh, how important um, is it that we start talking about clean air and climate change in the same breath? Good evening, Vishnu. And uh, so, first of all, we have a right to the climate information. And the climate information in the current stage is, is more of a debate that goes with the elite uh, class, uh, more with the researchers, practitioners, scientists, policymakers at a very high level. We haven't been able to 
uh, kind of uh, translate the climate information, the jargon, uh, graphs, maps, or the IPCC uh, warnings into a citizen-friendly language. And that's where the problem is. And uh, the problem lies not just with the data or the information, the enough data and information, but what it needs is uh, converting it into a palatable format. Now, for example, if there is a 40 degree temperature outside, then whether my family um, the family's health budget is going to improve or increase substantially, or am I is there going to be a dent in my wallet, or how exactly am I going to respond to it? Until unless we make it into that Delhi or common language uh, friendly, I think the gap is always going to be there. We will be always coming up with these deadlines. But what it is more important is to make it a uh, make it make this into uh, where you can make people more and more participatory because the action, as uh, uh, the fellow panelists just highlighted, that the action lies at the local level. And in order to make that action successful at a local level, uh, what is more important is is to take it forward in terms of making citizens aware of how bad it is. And at the same time, while it is very bad, how they can prepare themselves at citizen level, at individual sure. level, at community level, and more importantly, at at uh, the larger policy landscape level. Yeah. Dr. Ghosh, the fact that um, unfortunately neither clean air or um, uh, uh, or climate change is an election issue. I mean, it might be casually mentioned by some political leaders here and there. Is that not a central failing that uh, you don't win votes on the basis of... Um, not talking about uh, you know clean air or climate change, and unless it becomes a political agenda, it's essentially at one level a lost cause. Vishnu, I think we have to start thinking about the environmental dimension uh, from an economic perspective. Uh, air pollution, of course, is a liability, but clean air is also an economic asset. This is what the Our Common Air Commission is saying. So when we see that in emerging economies, air pollution increase results in reduction in foreign direct investment, when we see that you have lost mandates in terms of the workforce, then it has a direct economic impact. Ground level ozone has a direct Im ec economic impact in terms of agricultural productivity. So I think these issues will become a political agenda when, number one, we stop a blame game and focus on the solutions. Number two, when we see the economic dimension and not just the environmental dimension. And number three, when we get the political leaders and the policymakers uh, to see the solutions that are possible, because just blaming them is also not enough. And that's why a coalition of multilateral development banks, national financial institutions, policymakers, political leaders that are focused on solving the problem can very quickly start yielding or, or accruing the political benefits as well, because your productivity goes up, your agriculture productivity goes up, your construction industry starts booming again, your transportation sector starts transforming, your energy sector starts transforming. These are hard economic outcomes on, in a positive way sure. that an agenda that combines climate and clean air can deliver. Uh, Abhinash, and I think this is important for uh, our audience, how is climate change already upon us in India? Through specific examples, can you explain to us how it's already here and affecting lives? Uh, if we if we look at uh, how climate change has spanned or how uh, it's going to impact, then uh, as you rightly said, climate change is upon India. Um, with uh, at least at a district level, uh, the climate change is impacting, and more than three quarters of Indian districts are extreme event hotspots. But what is more important is the, the overall risk landscape is also changing. That is, traditional flood flow areas are becoming drought prone. Uh, but at the same time, in terms of heat wave, we are currently working in terms of understanding or developing the heat wave index at a sub district level. And uh, some of the preliminary findings are uh, uh, that's, that suggests that um, the heat wave is going to be a larger problem for uh, many of the uh, districts in India. In, in, in fact, at a sub-district level, this is going to be impact. Is going to impact more. Now, if uh, heat wave or the extreme events are already impacting us, and there were studies where um, almost 
in a frequency of every five days, we faced one or the other kind of extreme event across India. Um, and that's where a one is to five is a big number. I mean, it, it might not be affecting because of the larger, um, I mean, it might not be affecting us always, but someone somewhere is always getting impacted. That's number one. Number two is because it is getting impacted, our supply chains are getting disrupted. More importantly, if we are looking at heat wave as a larger problem or a heat stress as a larger problem, then uh, while the net zero uh, targets have been put out, uh, are there enough power to light our fans? Um, no, no, absolutely. And these are all critical uh, issues. And it's and not that's just where the transition. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's all around us, whether it is um, cyclones now with greater intensity in the oceans, whether it is a greater melt in the, in the glaciers in the Himalayas, droughts in some areas, floods in other areas. It's all linked. I'm only interrupting because I'm out of time. But thank you once again as we on NDTV continue to highlight this issue over and over again. We will take a short break up after that. Um, you know, we'll be following our reporters on the election trail. Many reports all across the country. Uh, you want to watch this? There's a lot of political action happening. Do take a look. The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn. Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. Can you give us, a few, like, say, three of your strongest takeaways of not to do's or to do's? Because it's a map you have to parenting. You have to, it's a slow process. But the three things one has to get, one can keep in mind even today in this very stress, pressure-driven world, goal-driven world for our kids. Well, I think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children, understand who their children are, and understand that every goal or every solution out there will not be tailor-made for your child. You have to attune to each child's essence and connect to who to that connect to who that child is. The second takeaway is connect before you correct. First try to understand what's going on within the child. Their behavior is only on the surface, but underneath the behavior is a need that the child has that we have to help the child discover and solve. And number three is every reaction to your child is more about you than it is about your child. So if you want to really do this as consciously as possible, you have to examine your own reactions and understand where they are coming from. And, and number four, the traditional ways of disciplining our children only create more harm. And the main concern is this constant hunger for approval and significance from the outside world. Uh, Dr. Shafali, I had the chance to hear you on Super Soul Sunday talking to Oprah Winfrey. This is, um, uh, she loves your work and the world gets to hear more about it through your public speaking and through all of this um, recognition that the work and your ethos is getting. Tell me about how you came to create this map of parenting and your journey that leads you to where you are today. So I'm a clinical psychologist by training and in my practice, I began to notice, you know, that the same themes of childhood pain were repeating themselves across clients, across generations, across sessions. And the part was in the parent-child relationship. And I know how loving parents are. I know how well-intentioned. I'm a parent. But I also know that we can be really blind to our own ways of being because we look at our children as our possessions, as our puppets, as our property. And a lot of harm gets done from parent to child. And I began doing it to my own child. 
when I began to see myself do it, that's when I really woke up and realized that I needed to heal myself and help other parents heal so that they don't over control and over manage their children. And the best thing is that most parents don't even know when they are doing that. It's happening so unconsciously. And that's my work is to make the unconscious conscious. Prime Minister Modi powers Congress. Well, what we thought we'd do on left, right and centre this evening is also focus on very exclusive reports from the political battleground, several constituencies and leaders across the country. Our election journey has in fact reached the New Delhi Lok Sabha constituency. NDTV's Vedant Agarwal has this ground report from New Delhi. for the heart of the national capital. The strategically important New Delhi constituency has seen tall words like Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Lal Krishna Advani and Ajay Markan contest from it. It is the oldest seat in New Delhi. It houses the power corridors of India. A victory in New Delhi means a key to the seat of the world's largest democracy. The throne of power, the core of our republic, the thrust of Indian democracy. This iconic boulevard has seen it all. Defining mandates, alliances rising to power, governments falling and prime ministers running the country from here, the center of New Delhi. One of the capital's seven constituencies, New Delhi is home to over 14 lakh voters including high-profile electors like the President, the Prime Minister, judges and senior leaders who form one of India's most educated electorates. It was in the late 1970s when the Janta Party was on the rise that Atal Bihari Vajpayee wrested the all-important seat from the Congress soon after the emergency. His closest confidant and India's former Deputy Prime Minister L.K. Advani contested from New Delhi soon after, in 1989, during the peak of the Ram Mandir movement. From Ajay Markan in the early 2000s to Minakshi Lekhi holding the fort for the BJP in the last decade, it has been a direct contest between the BJP and the Congress until Delhi's Aam Aadmi entered the fray. <laughs> Despite Kejriwal's back-to-back -back electoral victories in the state and local polls, his party has yet to dent the BJP's prospects in the Lok Sabha. This time, it's a battle between lawyers. The Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party are in alliance in Delhi, and New Delhi is being contested by the Aam Aadmi Party. From the AAP is the man who fought for the Anna Andolan in the courts, Supreme Court lawyer, and a sitting MLA from New Delhi's Malviya Nagar, Somnath Bharti. The task is cut out for the party heavyweight to defend his boss in prison and broom up his party's tattered image in the run-up to the polls. This time the election has a different colour altogether. The way the election took place in 1914, this time the reasons, the purpose, the focus is entirely different. The way BJP crushed opposition, the way they took away the rights of Delhi government, the, the, the way they tried to demolish the democratic uh, fabric of the nation, all will be addressed in this election. So people of Delhi want accountability from central government. All these members of parliament of BJP in last 10 years, they did not say a word. When rights of people of Delhi were being snatched by central government, they did not say a word. BJP understands Ajit Pawar, whom Honorable Prime Minister himself accused of 70,000 crores loot. He is in BJP. So BJP has a new washing machine. So now he is pure. Chagan Bujbal, who was jailed and remained in jail for one year on charges of corruption, he joined BJP. Now he is pure. You know, uh, Suventi Adhikari 
Himanesh Sarma, n number of people. So new washing machine in the market, BJP, which is to purify people, people do see कौन काम करता है कौन नामदार है कौन कामदार है In a radical political move, the BJP has unseated six of its seven contentious sitting MPs from Delhi. From hate speech accused Parvesh Varma and Ramesh Biduri to the controversial MP Gautam Gambhir, the BJP's big Delhi leaders have all been dropped. From New Delhi, the BJP has fielded a fresh face. BJP veteran Sushma Swaraj's daughter, 40-year-old Bansuri Swaraj. A political debutante, Bansuri Swaraj is a lawyer like both her parents, boasting of an illustrious legal career. There is no question of legacy. I can tell you that the people of Delhi have unwavering faith in Modi ki guarantee. Whether it was abrogation of Article 370, whether it was construction of a grand uh, Ram temple in Ayodhya ji, whether it was bringing 33% reservation in favor of women in both Vidhan Sabha and Parliament uh, by passing of the uh, Nari Shakti Vandana Adhiniyam. These are all promises which were enunciated in our manifesto and they have been absolutely fulfilled. These are union elections yes. uh, and therefore I think the voter also, the perspective is, is broader. We're talking about women-led development of a Vixit Bharat. So of course my vision resonates with his. The fact that most of the sitting BJP MPs were uh, removed, uh, how do you look at that? Do, do people here you see were sort of disillusioned by, uh, by the MPs of your party, uh, your predecessors? No, not at all. Hmm. Not at all. Our party has no ticket in our party, we have no ticket. And we have no ticket in our party, we have no ticket in our party. Delhi has nearly one and a half lakh first-time voters. And among them are thousands of young students in one of the country's biggest coaching hubs in New Delhi's Rajendra Nagar. In election season, this nerve center of UPSC aspirants is bustling with politics. अगर हम कंट्रीवाइड बात करेंगे, तो इसमें नो डाउट जो प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट होते हैं, क्योंकि ये लोकसभा का इलेक्शन है, उन्हीं के नाम पे वोटिंग होती है। लेकिन अगर आप मेरे विप की बात करेंगे, तो आप अपने कंस्टिट्यूएंसी और प्लस जो आपके जो भी प्रॉब्लम्स हैं, रिगार्डिंग कंस्टिट्यूएंस पार्टी के लीडर जो जैसे महाराष्ट्र में लीडर होगे राजस्थान में लीडर होगे मतलब ये कुछ ट्रांसपेरेंसी और एक लीडर की कुछ अकाउंटेबिलिटी नहीं बची है वो एक इलेक्शन में इधर एक इलेक्शन में उधर आजकल जैसे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बॉडी की जितना वो ग्रीमा गिरती जा रही है जैसे एक सोसाइटी का जो सोसाइटी बन रही है रिलीजन के बेसिस पे या कास्ट के बेसिस पे ये पिछले कुछ सालों में या एक दो डेकेट में बढ़ा है अभी क्योंकि अगर आज देखो आज के टाइम में अगर कोई अपनी कोई बात रखना चाहता है अगर कोई प्रोटेस्टर है या कोई और भी है अगर वो अपनी बात रखता है तो उसे एज ए एंटी नेशनल घोषित कर दिया जाता है उसी टाइप वो मेनली पार्लियामेंट में जो हो रहा है पार्लियामेंट की प्रोसीडिंग अगर हम भी देखते हैं तो पार्लियामेंट की प्रोसीडिंग में अगर उसका वो देखिए कि कितनी एफिशेंसी है वो आ ही नहीं रही है आई फील क्लीनलीनेस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दे शुड थिंक अबाउट आई फील द स्टेट्स आर नॉट वेरी क्लीन ऑल दिस डॉग्स हियर इट्स वेरी स्केरी द कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग इज वेरी हाई Since I'm from uh, Tamil Nadu, I see the cost of living is very high, almost double. From deadly pollution to toxic landfills and the sanitation mess, even as Delhi grapples with these long-standing issues, it is left without a chief minister. The arrest of Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal ahead of the big general elections has left the Ahmadi Party without its star campaigner and biggest face. The contest for the coveted New Delhi seat is a prestige battle, both for the Ahmadi Party as well as the BJP. Many political pundits say that the BJP, which has unseated six of its seven sitting MPs here in Delhi, is nervous of the Ahmadi Party, which has defeated the BJP both in state elections as well as municipal polls. But these are national elections. Can the big message of brand Modi, national security and Vishwa Guru trump local issues like sanitation and air pollution? That is a big question. In New Delhi with camera person Kanan Patra, Vedant for